yeah, our, our topic today is like um, wall locks and multiboards. And um, you think that multiboards and wall locks are very, very simple, right? But as over the t time in MPF, we learned that different people got like different opinions on how multiboards and, and ball locks, how they look and how they should behave in details. Um, I mean, obviously, like in older machines, they behave different because uh, like they, they needed the balls to be physically in certain places. In modern machines, like you get a lot of options, but still they do not always behave the same. So, I mean, the, the most notable difference is that some machines allow like lock stealing, for example, and others don't. And uh, yeah, so so in MPF we we think that we came up with a design which which basically um, allows all of those crazy things, and uh, that's what this stream is about today. So we will look into like how how locks work, what they can do, how they do it, and how you can configure them in MPF and how to integrate them with multi balls and yeah we will have like a small demonstration later and then we can yeah we can talk about your crazy ideas <laughs> so uh that's what we want to do today um i prepared a small agenda today so first we will talk about the difference between ball locks and ball holes in mpf so it's like that's kind of like mpf slang but I will ex explain it quickly and uh, it will hopefully make a lot of sense to you after that. Then we will talk about lock strategies that's specific to like um, multi-ball locks. And there are certain like strategies we implement to have to enable all those different kinds of areas of machines and ideas. Then we got like multi-balls themselves and afterwards how to integrate them and why you need to do that. <laughs> I will explain. And afterwards, um, we go into my demo machine and we will look into my small multi-ball mode, which is very simple and very basic, and we can play a little bit with it. So, let's start. So, first thing is like, we got like ball locks and ball holds in MPF. And the difference is the following. So, multi-ball locks is like, that's a lock, and a lock counts balls and it physically can like keep balls so it can physically keep them it doesn't have to but it always like counts them in some cases yeah it can also keep them and can it can then replace them so you shoot like one ball into the lock and you will get like a new one from your trough typically so it will replace the ball physically it might also like the, the ball might also enter the lock and there are already like three balls in there and only has space for four and um or like not in this case so it might have space for two one is in there you shoot in the second one and it instantly ejects the ball but still counts it in some cases and we will come to that where this happens when this happens and why but in general it counts balls there are multiple strategies for how we count and then there are like ball holes ball holds are different in that way that they only temporarily hold the ball they the, those balls are still in play like in in the multi-ball lock they, those balls are no longer in play so they are subtracted in some cases from the balls in play because they have been replaced right you lock a ball and then you get a new one but your ball count is still run one right but they're now like two balls physically on the play field so that's like the difference here and ball holes are used for stuff like um, any interruption where you would um, put a ball somewhere, then run some, I don't know, some mini game or um, yeah, like some mode selection and stuff like that. There's like two ways to do that, either by um, like uh, yeah, like like blocking the eject of a ball device or using ball holes. So there's like two different ways. But those are not like locks, they just hold the ball temporarily. And ball locks, they are used to count for multi-ball or to qualify for multi-ball. So that's like the difference here. 
Um, yeah, now, now you, now you hopefully understand that. Then we got like locking strategies. So like our multi-ball locks, they got like currently four strategies implemented, how they count. And this is like a little bit something where you have to wrap your, your mind around. So our default strategy is called virtual only. And that's basically, we, we maintain a count per player in a, in a, in a player variable. So basically that's that's maintained between balls so you drain your ball and on the next ball your your lock will continue to count and that doesn't necessarily mean that physical balls are still there right um for example you got some lock somewhere and like on, on a lot of machines and you shoot one ball in and now you drain your ball and afterwards, the other player also shoots two balls in, runs his multi-ball, and then the lock is empty when you're up again. And in this case, you will shoot one in, and now the count will be two anyway. Doesn't matter. And that might still like start your multi-ball, but we'll come to that later. And uh, so we count virtually only, and the physical like the physical balls is only secondary. So we will do some stuff like um if like your count is um your, your like your virtual count is like zero and there's already a ball in in, in the lock right um, and you shoot one in then we will instead of replacing the ball we will eject the ball because now like we try to make this the, the physical count the same as the virtual one but that's only like to to maintain an illusion right um also there's some some tricks to make sure that you can still shoot at the lock. Because for example, if I'm up as a first player and I fill the lock with two balls and now I drain my ball instead of starting my multi-ball and this lock only has like two position switches, then you as a second player wouldn't be able to lock a ball. So we have to eject one physically so that you will be able to like make the shot again and stuff like that. That's, that's what the multi-ball lock does make sure that it's possible to lock balls if if it's not physically full i hope that makes sense but that's like a common strategy like in modern machines so that's why this is like our default strategy and this is um yeah like like very very common then we got like something it's called no virtual it's like a weird name but it just means that we count per ball we ignore like physical counts it's just how many you you'd like shoot uh, you, you put into your your multi-ball lock um in this ball it's not tracked in a player variable it's just inside this lock and it's then forgotten after the ball it's very similar to virtual only except that it's like not remembered so if you stop the mode it's forgot forgotten forgotten so that's yeah sometimes useful if you do not want to like keep the count between ball and between like mode stops and starts sometimes that's something you want and then we got like physical only and physical only is like what you had in in older machines so you put the ball in physically and it only does what's in there physically so i shoot in one ball i lose my ball you're up you shoot in the second ball multiple starts and afterwards the lock will be empty so i will have to shoot in the ball again afterwards so that's um that's something and then we got like a, like a mixture between both that's like min virtual physical it sounds crazy but that's also something which all the machines sometimes had and that's basically that we count the balls virtually and we look at them physically and whatever is lower counts so for example you locked like one bar one ball and um so right i locked one ball and um, and you are up second now you lock a second ball then the the device again would like eject the ball instead of replacing it because like virtually you didn't have a ball there so it will make sure that you cannot steal locks but still if you 
then start multiball at some point and the device is physically empty and I'm up again, then I will still have to relock this ball physically. So that has been like used in machines which do not have an auto plunger, for example, because there the multi ball can only start if the balls are physically in the lock, right? Because otherwise it cannot start it. But still they do not want lock stealing. So this is basically the, the worst of both <laughs> from a player perspective. So you cannot steal and still you can be stolen, right? So other other uh, player can steal your balls. So those are like the four strategies which we implement in our multiball lock. <clears throat> you can have multiple locks, that's also possible. So you can have multiple multiball locks at once on the same ball device. So like a multiball lock always like connects to a ball device and it then keeps the balls inside this device. But you can also have like multiple multiball locks which can then like um, fight for the balls. Basically the one with the highest priority wins if it has like space left if it's the, the highest priority is full then it will go down to the next priority and so on so you can theoretically do crazy stuff with that um technically possible <clears throat> doesn't always make sense but but it would work so now we know how we can like lock balls and that's that's good and then we got multi balls and multiballs is like a different device in MPF. And what it does is basically it increases balls in play. I mean, it makes sense during a multiball, right? So um, instead of like having one ball in play, now you have three balls in play. And then it also like physically ejects those balls. And there's a strategy works like that. It, it first goes through all source devices it has. So you can give it like multiple devices. That might be your ball lock. It might be also like multiple ball locks. There are a lot of options. And um, if those devices do not have enough balls, then it will fall back to the trough and will fill up like the remaining balls. So that's important. Like if you got like a multiball lock with a virtual strategy where you do not have physically all the balls inside your ball device, then. Um, yeah, you got like one in the device and it's a two ball multi ball, then one will be from your lock and two from the trough. That's that's basically how that works. Theoretically you do not even need like um any ball lock, right? You can you can have MPF to get all the balls from, from your trough if you want. So yeah, that's then you get can you play your multi ball and afterwards um it has like a drain handler which basically tracks the ball's draining. And once balls in play reaches one, so only one ball left, then it will end. So then this multi-ball will end and it is possible to restart it, for example. So that's basically how, how the multi-ball like, device works. There's like a little bit, la little bit of magic going on in the background. Um, there's add a ball, all the standard stuff, right? Mm, there's... Yeah, that's that's basically what it does. Um, you can also have multi balls which add balls to the current like ball count. If you want to go from I don't know, from two ball from three balls in play to four and and stuff like that. There's a little bit of magic going going, but in general this is this is the logic. Um, and now you got like two different things. So you got multi ball locks and you got multi balls. So now. As you might imagine, we have to integrate them, and those two are independent, and that's that's like kind of for a reason. So like earlier in MPF days, that has been like one thing. So like the the multi ball would reset the lock and all this stuff, and nowadays it won't do this anymore. So uh, what it what it does now is it will. So the lock will lock the balls and the multi ball will create a multi ball but you still have to create the logic when your lock is enabled disabled and resetted so usually when your multi ball is done you want to reset your lock and we'll, you want to reset like the the virtual account if there's like a virtual lock right for a physical lock you cannot really reset a physical lock except like ejecting the balls 
but that's something which is on you and that's because like there are so many different ways to do that so some machines got like something where you have to qualify for a lock or sometimes you only have to start the mode that's the first thing right you need to do this integration then later we have to look at when the lock is full does does the multi-ball just start that sometimes happens right so you lock the third ball and it will start the multi-ball or do you have to make a certain shot or hit some target or i don't know there, there are like different ways to do that and for that reason we decoupled this a little bit and um, yeah because they're like multiple options and i will in the following now show you how, how i would do that in general so like it's maybe a little bit over engineered but it's a ge very general but flexible way and that's that's what i will show now so without further ado it's demo time <laughs> uh, if you got questions feel free to ask right uh, so what i prepared i prepared my machine again my machine has now like a new ball device which is called bd lock and that has two ball switches and an um, eject coil i also like reduced like um, eject timeouts to one second because otherwise it would take a lot of time to eject the balls into the play field are there any games out there you can think of with multi-ball lock features that mpf can't support mm not at the moment so if we um know any machines then we try to add support for that so like i think the last thing we added is something which was what was it like anthony added it has been in i don't know what it's ghostbusters um where basically they got like a lock inside a lane and you would shoot the lane or like in the, in the orbit right and you shoot the orbit from the back and the last ball will go in and then will release the whole lock and there he didn't want the last ball to enter this ball device and then be ejected again so instead like he changed the logic to support like this kind of lock also it's very very special but that also works and other than that we like it, I think that's relatively like flexible. So currently we should be able to support all kind of machines. But maybe you will find something where it's different. And then but then we can still add it. I mean theoretically you can have like the, the locking part in custom code or in the mode or with a state machine. Then then you can make almost anything happen, I, I would say. But I mean, pinball doesn't stop surprising us in, in, in interesting ways. So maybe we'll find something which we didn't see yet. So I don't know anything, but there might be something. We will see. <laughs> yeah, so I got like a ball lock here with two switches. And um, yeah, I also added like more switches to my draft so that I got sufficient balls. And all the rest is in this mode. So first I defined like a multi-ball lock. It's called my lock and it, it contains two balls and it's backed by BD lock. That's this ball device here. Oh, I didn't share this properly. So better. Okay. Mm, like that. So like, um, yeah, I got like this lock and that's backed by this ball device, which I just showed. And this way it can lock up to two balls like physically and it has like the default strategy virtual only as an event to um yeah to enable and to disable it and uh once it's full it will reset its count its virtual count and what well, we will come to this in a minute then i got like a multi-ball which gives you a three ball multi three three ball, <laughs> multi-ball so basically it adds two balls if there is like one in play, which would be the default. And it sources like this BD lock again, so the same device. And those two in general do not know of each other. They just know here where to put the balls and this one knows where to get the balls. And the integration is basically on you. 
um, and what this does is now that uh, so so what what I now propose basically is I propose to use a state machine, and the state machine now has like multiple states. The first is like the start step. So my mode started, that will go into this state by default. Then at some point we go into lock enabled. If you qualified for your lock, that will enable the lock. And when this when we leave this step, we will disable the lock. That makes sense, right? Um, afterwards the multi ball is available and can be started. And then after that it's running. And after that we will go back to start because like it's a very little linear state machine. And for that I created like some transitions here from start to lock enabled. I use one of my keyboard events, start at test one, test event one. When the lock is like en enabled uh, and once it's once the the full event is posted, we will go to multiball available. And then we, we are in multiball available. And once you press like test event two, we go into multiball running. And at this point, we should have like an, an event when started, start multiball. And we will use this one to start the multiball. And yeah, afterwards, like when this multiball basically is ended, so that it will post an event once, once it ended, then we will go back to start. And that basically completes our cycle. And we can now like try this and see how it goes. Hopefully I did it right. So let's start it up. Here's my machine. Here's the other window. We got the play field here. Mm. Where should I put it? And we want to look at this device, right? So this is the state of my state machine. I want to look at the ball device counts here. So I will add some balls. So I will add three balls to the trough. And now I will press start to start the game. Player one is up. Maybe, yeah, so one one ball in play, one on the play field in a minute. And now we can like shoot a ball into the lock and the lock will basically eject it again because it's not like enabled yet. Because like the multi-ball state machine is still in the start, in the start step. So I'll press my event one and it will go into lock enabled. And we can now also see, um, unfortunately we can't see that it's, that it's like it's like enabled, but it has like a count of zero. So we can now lock one ball. You can see that one is physically in. The count went to one. You can lock the second one. And now it already resetted this count because like we used the event when it's full to reset its count. And my state machine like advanced to multi-ball available. So those balls are still in there. And the multi-ball didn't start yet, right? There's still only one ball in the play field. So I like configured the event test two, which is my keyboard event, to advance to the next st step. So let's press it. And now the multiball is running. It ejected both balls. Play field now has three balls. So multiball is running. So this one is uh, shoot again. Now shoot again ended. Added two balls. Balls, yeah, live target is like three. So that's how much it wanted to um, have on the play field. And now we can drain ball one. We got two on the play field. We drain the last ball. Now the multi ball is like, it's done. And our state machine went to the start step again. So the lock shouldn't be enabled. So it will eject balls. And I can press one again to go to the lock enabled again. And I can lock balls again. That's basically how simple this is. Um, yeah, now we can like do the same stuff again, right? So I go to multiball available, start the multiball, it checks the balls, bam, bam, was too fast, and yeah, that's basically how that works. Um, 
very simple <laughs> so what can we look at so we can also look at how does this behave if we now have two players so let's let's give it a try so as you probably can imagine if we put in three balls start one player and add a second player so now we got like a two player game and uh, now we will like enable this mode again and i will lock one and two balls so what would happen now if i drain my ball so i got only one ball in my playfield so what would happen i mean now this block has two balls in there so the, the other player will not be able to lock a ball right so let's try so we will drain one ball and oh what happened now it ejected one ball there's now still player one up and what happens now is that this lock device here registers a drain handler and it waits until this ball now drains into the trough so flippers will be disabled and after that player two will be up so let's let's try it so bam now it can went to player two because uh, it had to wait for like this ball to drain and now the lock is zero for the second player so let's let's see what happens um, if I again start the enable the lock now we can shoot a ball in here right so let's try so we will shoot a ball in and hmm, now the lock is one and it instantly ejected the, uh, the ball again right so I didn't get a new one from the trough it ejected this ball because otherwise I wouldn't be able to shoot in another one and now we can shoot in again and now multiball is available. So let's run my multiball. Multiball is running. Let's shoot again. So if I drain the ball now, it will give me the ball again. Bam, it ejected it again. And now shoot again is over. I can drain one ball. Drain the second ball. And now I was too fast. like that now I still got shoot again ah no it it the, the trough has like a long like eject time mode. i have to wait for the eject time out i know now it's in the play field and now it rained and now this mode is over and now we can go back to the first player so uh, we can drain this ball we go to ball two of player one and now this player um uh, unfortunately my lock uh, didn't like persist the state but okay so i cannot show that i think because we still got locked balls zero again um that's unfortunate <laughs> so what did i put here did i reset ah, okay I only need to reset for the current player. So like there are two events, one is for all players and one is for the current player. So let's just do it for the current player. <laughs> uh, so we will try this once more. And then it should work. Let's see. <laughs> okay. So where's my device inspector? There. Three balls in there. One player, two player. So enable the lock and lock one ball, lock the second ball, and <laughs> now we got this one. Ah, here we still got my event from last stream. And now we go to the second player, it ejects this ball. We drain the ball so we go to the second player lock is zero again um we will start this we will enable the lock lock the ball lock the second ball start the multi-ball it will give us all the balls we can have fun um eject one ball 
press this uh, shoot one ball here and then train the ball and do we still have shoot again? So now we can drain one and drain the second one. And now um, this multi ball ended. We can drain the ball and go back to the first player. And now I thought we would have one still, <laughs> but for some reason we don't. Um, so enable the lock, lock one ball, and lock the second ball. Okay, for some reason, reset count for current player. It should only reset for the current player. Hmm. I would guess. <laughs> but for some reason, that didn't work. Um, yeah, now we can also like run like different strategies here. So we could like also run like physical only, for example. And that would be the, the traditional ball stealing stuff right uh, probably i didn't save it i guess let's let's try this one for once so now um we can uh, let's let's do one thing one more thing just for a smooth simulation we will reduce the eject timeout here um so like that we got the play field we got our device and we will like add boards again. Um now we got the ball. No, start one player, two player. Enable our lock, lock one ball, and lock two ball. Now this oh what did it do? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I know what I did. You cannot reset physical balls. <laughs> they, they won't go away. MPF doesn't like that. Okay, let's um, remove that for a minute. And try again. So, add balls, start the game, second player, um, enable the lock, lock one ball, lock two balls. Now multi-ball is available. Um, in this case, we will run into weird issues, and I will show you in a minute. So let's let's let just basically pretend that I now failed to um, yeah to start the multi ball and I rate my ball. So now we go to the second player, and in this case, this lock won't like eject any balls. And now you can probably imagine what will happen because now I got my state machine. I will enable the lock. But now I'm unable to shoot balls in here, so because the lock is already full. And in this case, you would need some like like some tricks, because yeah, here here you got like the issue that this is physically already full. So either like that's why like most machines which run this kind of locks, they instantly start the multi ball to pretend this kind of um, uh, to to prevent this kind of tricks, right? And um, if you want to like work around this one, you would typically um, have some conditional transitions here. So in this case, you would often want to go from lock enabled to multiple running, or even from start to multiple running, right? Because in this case, uh, this is like, um, yeah, this is like an, an issue. So what you want to do is like you want to have source start, source um, lock enabled, and target would be multiball running. And for that you got like events mode, my mode started, and then we would do dump something like devices multiball lock, and then my my multi ball lock how's it called my lock yeah my lock 
and then um you would use a balls i ah, know we would use a ball device no we would yeah right we would run ball devices a bd lock and then we would go with balls equals two so in the case there are two balls in this device we would instantly start like our 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 multi ball instead so let's see if I got this right. We will see in a minute. <laughs> but I think, I think we got this right. So let's try. Um, maybe that's, I mean, probably from, from this state. So once it's enabled, right? So instead of going to No, we would, how do we, would we do it? So instead of going from, so you would still have to enable it and that, but then we won't wait for it to be full, right? So instead of from, now we would go, we basically would make this available instantly. Um, yeah, that's, that's basically, uh, how you want to do it right so you have to think it what what should do what should happen right so here like we go to the second player what should happen um i would say like in this case you would go to um yeah like in this case i would say once you uh, so you instantly go to this mode where the multi ball is available but not started so we would go to this state here where you where the lock is full um so this one where multiball can be started and you'd only have to make the shot to start the multiball that's what i would do here so from start and from also from this one so basically it doesn't matter where you currently are at so ah so if any of those two steps we would go to multiball available um yeah right so so we could also go from from here but let, let's let's make it simple for now so like different ways so it's a state machine you can decide how you want to do it so i now decided that the other player can instantly then start the multiball if he wants so let, let's give it a try let's see if it works um it balls one two nah. start enable it one two and now we train the ball now player two is up and let's see what happened here still in the start step that's not so great because uh, <laughs> yeah it, it helps so thinking instead machines helps um yeah right you could also release it um but that's for physical counting that's an issue right that's it's now like physical counting it only the physical count counts it's not like any virtual count um let's say you wanted players to share this multiball progress state machine that way you could configure the mode for that um yeah you can like run one state machine which is not like in which is not run not persisted in a player variable but globally so you would set this to persist false and here this is state false and then this would be like only once per machine right you could put it in one non-game mode which always runs so have to have to you have to be a little bit careful when it starts and stops but that's not track per player in this case so then this works so this you can this kind of stuff so now i have to think how i ball devices bd lock balls so hmm. mode my mode started okay and then this condition let's see if this condition could be true ball device ball bd balls two yeah 
and from source it's a list that's good from start we can start we post this one devices i think it's plural but let's let's just look this up for a minute i often get this wrong <laughs> uh, all devices let's see it's device, uh, it's singular. That's one of the mistakes I make the most. So I often mix up device and devices. So let's try this one again. Yeah, you're right. You're right then. So it's uh, maybe we should like bail out if you make this typo because I do the, this one too often, far too often. So start the game. One, two. Enable the. So I drained the ball accidentally. Let's go back to player one again. Um, enable our state machine, lock enabled. Lock one, lock two. Go back to player two. And now you can see that this one instantly jumped to multi-ball available. So now I'm playing player two and I just have to press key two on my keyboard and it should give us the multi-ball. And that's actually what happens now. So now like the player two has two balls, shoot again is running. So now we should get it back. Yeah, that works. Now shoot again ended. First ball drained, second ball drained. State machine went back to start. We drain this ball and we come back to player one. So that's like very basic how you can do that, right? And it, with like the virtual accounting stuff, MPF will take care of that for you. But with physical stuff, you can have more control on it if you not need like the physical multiball. So that's that's like this integration kind of work, which you can do in any way. So if you don't really like it this way, you can do it like in other ways and have the player qualify as well. So um, let me try like virtual only again and in this case it should i just want to see if it persists those uh, counts but i think it should so we can like do an example for that again so at ball start the game one two player and now we enable the lock bam lock one ball so we got like one ball locked, but then we drain the other one, right? So now player two is up, it's lock of zero, let's drain the ball and it should have one again. Yeah, that definitely works. Now let's pretend we locked the second one. Ah. We locked the second one. Ah, yeah, the lock is not enabled, right? So we enable it, we lock the second one. Ah. And I remember what I did wrong, <laughs> because this lock instantly resets itself when it's full, right? So that's um, that's not good, because then I, I'm not able to keep the ball count to the next ball. So instead what we can do is, we can reset this only when the multiball starts. So basically, in this case, so we will reset the count for the current player when the multiball starts. This play this way, it will only reset once we try to start the multiball, but not before that. That that has been my my issue, I guess. So now I should be able to um to 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 demonstrate what I wanted to show, right? So give it some balls. I start once, twice. Now we enable the lock. Lock enabled. Lock one ball lock the second ball and now we are multi-ball available drain the ball and yeah now now it ejected one we drain this one player two is up player two also like enables the lock and locks the second ball but it's virtually counted so that's his first ball he locks the second one now it has, he has two, 
and he starts the multiball. So I press two. Multiball is running. And now we shoot again. Let's wait for that. And yeah, it's, it's done. Train one, train two, and we should be able to. Ah, yeah, we got still one, right? <laughs> uh, the last one. And now we go back to ball two of player one, and player one still has two balls locked, right? And now we can, like, lock the. So we, we, we cannot lock anything here, right? Um, and now we basically got the same issue like before. So now we got like two balls locked. We enabled the lock. Lock is enabled. But I can shoot one ball in. And it will eject this ball because um, the lock is already full, right? So now we have to do like exactly the same thing which I did before with the ball device. But now we have to do the same with the ball lock. So in this case, uh, we would do something like, um, so when, when would we want to do it? When we go from, yeah, so, so for example, you could say we could, we, we, you have to qualify again, right? So let's say we go to test event one and devices be, uh, multi ball locks and this one is called my locks and we can look it up here and uh, what what's the locked balls that's the parameter locked balls equals two in this case we go no, we go from start to multi ball available just in this case and now in the other case this one we can say if it's not equal to just to be safe but this is like evaluated in order so this one would win <laughs> so let's try and give this a try right and as you can now probably imagine there are like some eventualities and you have to take care of those because mpf cannot like really anticipate what you want to do. It tries to do its best with the physical stuff, but it cannot anticipate what you want to do if it's already full. So in this case, um, you have to do the integration. So let's enable it. Lock one ball. Lock the second ball. Multi-ball available. We train one ball. It ejects one. Train the second one. Now player two is up. Player two, yeah, just trains it again. Player one is up again, has two boards locked, right? This one is still in start, in a step start. And now we will qualify again, right? So let's do this. And now we go to multiball available instantly, not for multiball, and not for lock enabled, but to multiball available. And now we can just um, start the multiball. Now the question is like, we got only one here, right? So one ball physically. And what does it do? I mean, you probably can guess now, it will use the second one from the trough. So let's start the multiball. Now you can see that the trough ejected a ball and the block ejected the other ball. We got two in play. And we can now like drain those. One of them, I still shoot again. <laughs> now we can drain it one, two, and the ball is over like that's that's the that's one of the ways um the other thing which you can do is like something it's like that so now we can say that like yeah no basically you you saw that right so the other thing we can try is this one you can add start the game again enable it let's say you locked one ball then you drained your other ball now the second player is up and um now the second player basically plays the multi ball so let's do that um lock enabled lock one ball lock the second ball start multi ball 
our balls are out. Let's wait till the shoot again is done. Um, dum, 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 dum. <laughs> drain the first ball, drain the second ball, and the last ball. Now first player is up again. And we got one physically locked ball, right? So that we qualify again. And now we can shoot in like the second ball here. And now again, we only got physic one physical ball in here, but multi-ball is available. So now we can start multi-ball again. One of the balls is coming from the trough for like compensating that one ball has been missing. Okay. <laughs> so finally it worked. Um, and that's what I would use. And you see that like the, sta the state machine is not huge, right? It's just one age of configuration with a few states. Um, but this like condition is very common in a lot of cases when you restart modes and so on. Or like um, if you go to a second ball. That's that's very common and um, I've seen this often. I also got this in my machine. And But basically you can integrate those two here. So your multiball lock and your multiball or like even multiple locks if you want and the multi-ball, multiple multi-balls <laughs> uh, with like a state machine. It can be done, done differently, it can be done in code. There, there are like multiple ways and uh, yeah, but I recommend it to do it like this way because that's like also like a good way to write modes in general. So that's my recommendation there. So, and, and this can like run all kinds of multi-ball with all the weird behavior you ever imagined <laughs> yeah so now if you want to see anything or want to try anything we can we can do that we can also try the other locking strategies but you can probably imagine how they work um or i don't know maybe you want to know something different it's also possible because like that's that's what i prepared for today if you want to make a timed multi-ball that it drains all the balls after let's say 30 seconds, how would you do that? Mm, that's like that's like um I mean how do how do you drain all the balls? Uh, that's generally very, very simple. Just disable the flipper fingers <laughs> and then the balls will drain. So um I would simply I would run like a multi-ball and then yeah like with 30 seconds shoot again and then disable flipper fingers <laughs> and that's uh that's uh, what you would have but then i guess if you want to drain all the balls then you still need like an additional ball save at the end and there are like features in ball save for exactly that reason because like a few people wanted to do that so ball save has like a feature. Let's let's search for it. Uh, where it basically gives you back the latest, the last ball only, and not ball. Uh, save, not search. I've been working today, so <laughs> I'm I'm a little bit I'm, I'm a little bit done for today. So um. Ah, let's let's remove this highlighting. I don't like it. Okay. Um. So yeah, there's like balls to save, so only save the last one. And then you, can, I think there's also like um a setting for only the last for 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 a delay. So delayed eject events. So that basically it saves the last one and then it waits like ten seconds for the drama. And then gives you back one of the balls, for example. I mean, you can also do this with uh, like, um, like like queue events, what I showed last time, so that you can eject the uh, delay the eject and so on. There multiple ways, but that's what I would do. Is there a machine out there where you can steal a ball from the other player? Yes, for example, Rick and Morty from Spooky. I played it on Saturday or like a lot of older machines but i mean sometimes even in your machines like rick and morty does it 
I think TNA also. So uh, Scott Denisi, yeah, kind of liked it with this the Denisi lock, like with the the drop targets uh, where you can stage balls. That's also where they got that. Uh, in general, it's like simpler, right? <laughs> you have to track less state, and like that's also I guess why older machines did that. So like the solid state or electromechanical machines, if they had like physical locks, then they they did it this way. <laughs> yeah, kind of complicated, but it's cool as a player. I like it. And I don't know if you if you looked if you saw Rick and Morty, they got like a, a horseshoe like this with two drop targets here and here, and you can lock one between each of those. And then there's like a a post in between, so they can also like separate those two. But you can also shoot them over, so they can do like crazy stuff with this lock. But I guess that's also like kind of complicated to like program. And um, yeah, that would be also probably a challenge in MPF. So I know that you can do like an easy lock. You can even do it in configuration. It's not super nice, but it works. It's like at the edge. So I personally would do that in code, but you can still do this in configuration. Um, oh, yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, like the easy lock. That's, that's cool. I mean, I like that that like spooky goes like into creative ways of doing like new kind of mechs which didn't exist right and and basically in embedding them into the game flow that's that's super cool but also like 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 lately in, in like sterns they also got like some cool locks so like um i think avengers they got a lock where they keep the ball on a magnet in a, in a ramp which goes up and then they got like I think they even got like a fork, like a post, like a, a, like a dual post below where the ball can roll down and be locked. So that's also like kind of a crazy lock. And yeah, I mean, there's like I guess like with magnets and some posts, there's like a lot of different crazy locks which can be which are waiting to be implemented. <laughs> so. There are, there are like multiple options, I think. And yeah, like even even a magnet can be a lock if you want. If you have like really a, a, a opto which can check if there's a ball on the um on the magnet, then you can also use a magnet as a as like yeah as a lock, right? So it's also possible. <laughs> and and with that. <laughs> guys um, have a great evening and build some pinball have fun and um, see you maybe on Saturday or like some in some of the chats or in the forum and somewhere and until then um, have a great time